who this afternoon have uh, kind of written the Book of Lamentations because of the corruption, the wastage, the stealing of public money that is happening in our counties. And uh, Madam Speaker, I'm no exemption, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, as uh, Senator Mgatana has put it, unless we are putting in place mechanisms to ensure that this money that will be collected will not form another stream for governors to steal, governors will start celebrating as soon as this money hits their uh, accounts. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I am uh, I'm speaking here with uh, <laughs> having the honors of coming from the account that has been rated by Ethics and, and Corruption Commission as the one that is leading in corruption in the country. So, so shameful, Madam Speaker. A county that has produced distinguished Kenyans, including retired Chief Justice of the Republic, the control of budget comes from Yamira, but we have that distinction of being rated as a leading county in corruption. So unless, Madam Speaker, we put in place mechanisms uh, that will ensure that this money is used for the benefit of the locals, Senator Chiriot, uh, this will just be another way of creating an efficient way of making his money available for governors. I will pray that the committee that will uh, retreat to go, f go further into the details, we look at mechanisms of ensuring that uh, this money once collected from hard-working uh, Kenyans, it, it comes back to benefit them. Just the other day, Madam Speaker, the current government of Nyamira increased uh, the daily uh, rates for Mamamboga from 30 shillings to 50 shillings. Uh, border Border, there was a task the other day to increase the Border Border rates per day from 10 shillings to 20. And these are Kenyans who are hustling who make uh, almost $2 a day to fend for their families. And then you find, Madam Speaker, that uh, somebody has the, the audacity, the courage, to again steal from uh, such class of, of, of Kenyans. In fact, Madam Speaker, just to join uh, what Senator Jeriot was saying, you collect money, but you don't provide even basic uh, services. In uh, our second largest uh, town in Yamira, Keroka, we have been without toilets in our market for the last two years, Madam Speaker. A tender that was given four years ago uh, to build toilets has, has not been uh, completed to date. We also have the distinction as being among the six counties uh, whose, whose uh, audited accounts have moved from being qualified to adverse. And, and you know some of the factors contributing is just impunity, Madam Speaker. Some of the queries uh, the Auditor General is raising is that there's a circular from SRC that uh, has given a guideline that a governor should not drive, uh, should not buy an official car that is more than 3,000 cc. But my governor has defied the Auditor General for the last two financial years and has continued to drive a V8 of 4,600 cc. You know, just sheer impunity. It's like saying Utadu, you know. Now we have moved to a level where the Auditor is saying we'll mark this as a county that uh, needs to move from qualified to adverse, Madam Speaker. On bursaries, money that is supposed to assist needy children, orphans, Madam Speaker. The auditor is saying you can't withdraw money and then purport to say you are moving around schools giving 3,000 shillings. Instead of transferring that money direct to schools. In some instances, Madam Speaker, we had a sitting last week with the, the committee chaired by Senator Ososi, Madam Speaker, and money is sent to a school, but no names are sent. One Muse uh, was even crying, saying, "My name, the name of my child appears, 
as having benefited, but that child never benefited. Those are the kind of uh, criminal acts that we are having at our counties. And you know the tragedy is this. ESCC can issue a report telling us Nyamira is the leading county in corruption, but there's not even a single case of anybody from the county government of Nyamira who is facing corruption charges in any court of law. There has not been any seizure of assets. If this money was stolen to buy properties in Karen, people are putting up marshonets with lifts in their houses, and no action has been taken, Madam Speaker. And you know ESCC is chaired by my good friend, Bishop Oginde, a man I hold in high esteem, a man I really respect, Madam Speaker. How are you going to build confidence in our governors, Madam Speaker, if you rate a county as being the leading in corruption, and yet you are taking no action to apprehend the suspects, all those who are engaged in corruption, Madam Speaker. And these are the people we are saying this afternoon that we are going to pass the national rating bill and place this money under their control. I can see there is a good effort in this bill to ensure that we discourage manual collection of these rates. We are saying take the money to the bank, pay the money electronically. But there is another clause there that says a CEC can gazette another method of collection. Madam Speaker. And that's where you will create those T junctions we are talking about, Madam Speaker. Really, 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 this afternoon, I want to speak and appeal to my president. Madam Speaker, unless we tackle corruption at our counties, unless we make corruption extremely painful at, our, at, at the county level, Madam Speaker, our people will continue suffering. Before the Committee of Ossosi, Madam Speaker, was a, a, a situation where 110 million shillings was sent to the county government of Nyamira to build 300 bed capacity, emergency COVID response hospital. We were horrified when the governor appeared and said, we decided to divert this money for other purposes, which is contrary to the Public Finance Management Act, Madam Speaker. We were horrified that uh, mortgages in, in, in Yamira, Madam Speaker, a cabinet sits and it decides to dish money. There is no security at all, Madam Speaker. There is no format of how you recover this money, Madam Speaker. And this is public money, which is just shared. It's like a cabinet sits and says, today we are giving a governor 20 million. After three weeks, he comes and he says, I want a top up. And you are given minutes, say we have given governor a top up of three million. We should not allow this, Madam Speaker. Re really, as senators, we must retreat and find a way of dealing with the corruption we are seeing in our counties. And we cannot place our trust in MCS, Madam Speaker. When we ask the the, 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 the Public Accounts Committee of Nyamira, whether they have ever done any report on how money is spent in Nyamira, they say they have never. They have never tabled any report, Madam Speaker. So all these things, they were just seeing them when they appeared before the associate-led committee in the Senate. So there's a big, big gap on now we can protect uh, the public uh, resources. The bill is very good. Uh, I like the approach on public participation, Madam Speaker, that for once we are recognizing that the people who reside in, in counties may not be uh, people who are fluent in either English or Kiswahili, and we are saying there will be serious campaigns in our local FM stations, there will be uh, radio shows, just to ensure that before you make a decision on what you will be charging uh, people uh, who own properties in our urban centers, they have an input. That's very progressive. But the elephant in the room, Madam Speaker, is how to protect these uh, resources. I also must commend the drafters of this bill, because initially I was worried that we may be 
entering that territory where we want to tax uh, farmers, uh, I mean like our tea farmers, uh, people who own free old land, but I'm, I'm happy that uh, this bill has a clause that specifically excludes any rating from uh, farmers who have uh, free old land. That uh, majority leader is very commendable. We don't want 